Hi everyone, welcome to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to be looking at Photofish, a children's game that was actually nominated for the 2020 Kinderspiel des Jahres Award, the German kids game. Let me show you how this game of photographing pairs of fish works, and then I'll give you my thoughts. Here's the setup for a game of Photofish. Each player will have a board in front of them on the green side for easier play or the blue side for a slightly busier, harder play. Players will also each have a camera of their choice. The yellow cameras are smaller. They're, they are a 2x2 two two square, which is recommended for younger players. And then the red 3x2 camera is recommended for more advanced play, and I'll explain why that is. The goal of the game is for players to grow their little fish, this is kind of a victory point marker, to try and put these pieces into there each round, which will elongate it. If the player is able to find a combination of fish in their viewfinder that matches the result of the die first, they'll get a longer piece to extend their fish, and all the other players will then get a smaller piece if they're able to find it. So the first person to grow their fish long enough to go from one side of the board to the other is the winner. So the game is very simple, as it should be. Players will each have one of these viewfinders. Uh, a player will roll the two dice and will make a combo, in this case purple and orange. So both players are now racing together trying to find a place where they can get purple and orange in their viewfinder and exclusively purple and orange. When the, f the first player to do so is to <laughs> yell the word click, like they've taken a picture of the fish. You'll notice over here, for the player using the uh, 3x2, the larger camera, they are allowed to turn their camera vertical or horizontal to try and find an area where they can grab a, a purple and an orange fish, in this case, and only a purple and orange. This would not be a valid play because a blue fish is also here in the corner. And so you could turn your camera and then yell click. Now if everybody has done it, they will get at least one piece, but as I said, the first player to have done it will get the longer extending piece. The other player gets the other one, the shorter one, and then play continues. This game does play up to four players, so the players will then again roll the dice, and now this is green and orange. So players are now going to be racing around their board looking for green and orange. Click, click. And now the, this player did it first, so they'll get the longer one, and then the other player will get the shorter one. And then, yeah, you just play continues until you reach this side of the board. Now, another recommendation in the rules is that as, as that players can change out the boards every turn, because there are four boards. So you can pass the boards around the table, or you could swap them out, because you will kind of get used to where the uh, layout of the fish are. So that you can swap out or swap between each other or change with the other boards so that you have a little bit of a different time. You can also play with the smaller viewfinder on the busier board, or you could play with the larger viewfinder on the less busy board to just kind of adjust for levels. And that's how you play Photofish. So as you can see, it's a very simple game, very uh, you know, fast pace, real time kind of stuff. You roll the dice, you look for the pairs of fish, and you yell click. That's the rules. You know, and don't turn your camera, you know, viewfinder diagonal. That's, that's it. It's a very cute game. It's very adorable. I like how approachable it is, how simple it is to explain. I enjoy and appreciate the variability where you can pass the boards around. I appreciate that they put a lot of effort into making the boards double sided green for easy, blue for slightly more advanced, and they have the two different sizes of cameras. Now, as an adult, I will say that I was slowing myself down intentionally to play with my five-year-old. The box does say ages four plus on it, and I think that as the adult playing with my kid, I had to do a few things to kind of slow myself down. We're looking for the orange and the purple fish, you know, and then I would move the viewfinder. I played on the blue board. I played with the larger uh, viewfinder, so it was more likely, I suppose, that you would accidentally get, you know, blue and purple, and then, oh no, there's a green fish in there too. It wasn't that difficult. It was very easy. So either I am big brain, huge smart Chris, or, you know, it's not going to scale that difficult for the adults, but it's fun. And I found myself having fun with it. I found that the times that we were playing it where we kept score with the little fish growing, 
that kind of slowed it down. And my five-year-old actually said to me, Dad, can we just play this just for fun instead of for points? And I quickly agreed because I thought that was just so silly, right? And now, to be fair, I played it with two people. Maybe there's more growing tension when there's three or four people and you see someone getting a lot of the big pieces and their fish grows longer. That's just silly. I mean, it's cute that there is a, a scoring method. In fact, a lot of kind of party or silly games include a scoring method because otherwise people will say, why isn't there a way to score or a winner? But this is just a fun thing to play. I found myself having fun even though it wasn't very challenging. But I think that this could work with two kids just playing with each other. And so if you have that type of situation where you want something that's very simple that you don't as the adult have to play with them because this will wear thin, right? I'm not anxiously excited to get this to the table again. Whereas I think there's other kids games that are both appropriate for a four or five year old that I as the parent or the grown up in the situation would more readily play. This one's cute though. And when we eventually put aside the scoring tokens and we just started rolling and looking for fish, it didn't matter who was there first. It didn't matter who did it or who didn't do it quicker than the other. It was just fun to slide around and say, click. And me, oh, the other thing I did to slow this down for me as the adult was instead of looking at the whole board and then kind of moving the camera where I needed to, I slowed myself down by only looking in the viewfinder as if I was in like the Michael Keaton Batman costume and I couldn't move my neck, right? I just had to go look exactly where the viewfinder was of my little camera piece and that was more fun for me as the adult. So if you want something that kids can play together, if you want something that you can play with them, then, you know, I think this one works quite well. I'm going to give this a kids six rating, meaning that if you find it somewhere, I think you'll have fun with it. Now, multiple people have said to me that this is something that maybe you could very readily, uh, you know, have rethemed as like a Pokemon Snap kind of thing. And I think that would be great because one of the biggest downsides to this is it's not colorblind friendly. The fish look very, very similar, and the fish on the dice are the same drawing except in different colors. So if that is a, if you know, if that does preclude you, unfortunately, that won't do it. But could you imagine if there was a Bulbasaur and a Charmander and, uh, and a Tangela or something like that? That'd be, that'd be awfully cute. The multiple people have made that joke because the game is so charming and so fun, and so that's why I give it a kid six. This is something that I had fun playing. So anyway, thank you for coming to the Dice Tower for this kid's game review. My name is Chris. Have a great day.